This last example is, in fact, our final example for the chapter, for Chapter 3 in Physics 125. And it's one that we are going to have the most, um, the most algebra of any of the problems that we've seen in this chapter. And I do want to point out, and I think we make the note in the lecture video, that the algebra-intensive problem that we're doing here is not one of the problem types that we really would focus on for the test, but we do want to be able to kind of push our abilities on assignments, and so we might see a problem or two like this show up in homework assignments. But for tests, we tend to focus on the problems that have difficulty in the physics understanding, but not specifically difficulty in the, in the math. Okay, so we have Harper who is trying to shoot a basketball. And from where the ball is released, so here's our basketball. From where the ball is released to the basket, there is a um, difference in horizontally 10 meters. So we can be at a final location of 10 meters and an initial location of zero meters. And we are two meters higher with the basket. So the final Y is two meters and the initial Y value is zero because it's two meters higher than the ball release point. So when we shoot this basketball, we've been told that it's gonna be a 40 degree angle. We just need to figure out how fast we wanted to um, shoot this with. So the ball will go through the air and hopefully into the basket. And so this is the second time where we've realized that we need to find the initial velocity. And it's a little more complicated than we might um, first realize. So this example here, the one that we've seen that is most similar is the dart launcher, example 3D, where we had the starting and ending position in both X and Y. And we had to use one equation to solve for time and then plug it into the other equation. The reason why this particular problem is tougher algebra is because we are going to have two equations with two unknowns. And it's the first time that we really had to deal with that, but it will definitely not be the last time that we have to deal with that in this semester. Okay, so let's get started and make sure we understand um, how, to, how to go about this. So I'm gonna use two different colors. I'm gonna use red for the X part of this and blue for the Y part of this. So we need to find, before I do those colors, we need to find V naught and really, we need to think about V naught X and V naught Y. Because one thing that's important to recognize here is that this is still a vector at an angle. And this mantra that we should have in our heads of always, always breaking a vector that is at an angle into components right away is still the case here. V naught X and V naught Y, we can write, even though we don't have a number value, we can still write as V naught cosine 40 degrees and V naught sine 40 degrees. That's gonna help us identify a couple of key things. Okay, so for the X stuff, we have V naught X, we have the final X, and we have the initial X. We don't have a number value for one of those, but we can still write down the xt equation. x equals x naught plus v naught x t. Because we have 10 equals 0 plus v naught cosine 40 degrees times t. All right, so I'm going to set that aside for the moment, and we're going to hopefully start to recognize why that was still useful to write down. In the y direction, we have the initial location, we have the final location, and we have the, um, 
initial y velocity. If we write down the yt equation, then we'll see that the unknowns that we have in this equation match those from the previous equation we just wrote down in red. 2 equals 0 plus, and we're going to put in v naught sine 40 degrees times t minus 1 half g, well, we'll go ahead and put 9.8 instead, 9.8 t squared. All right, so what we can do now is recognize that for this equation that I've drawn an arrow for, and for this equation that I've drawn an arrow for, we have two equations and two unknowns. t, which we're not actually looking for, and v naught, which we definitely are looking for. The way that a system of equations works, if it's been a while since you've had algebra or you don't really remember learning it in the first place, one of the methods we can use is to use substitution. So we're going to solve this equation for v naught. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to rewrite it real quick so that we see what's going on. Cosine 40 degrees times t. We're going to divide the left and the right by cosine 40 degrees times t, so that v naught is all by itself, all of this will cancel, and we have an equation that we can use to replace it. So substituting in this for v naught, we can now write 2 equals, the 0 goes away, write just for this cos or this v naught part here, I'm going to write 10 over cosine 40 degrees times t on the bottom. The sine is still here, so times sine of 40 degrees times t minus 4.9 t squared. All right. Now a couple of key things to notice, and I'm going to scroll down to give us plenty more space. All right, so in purple here, I'm going to show this T on top and this T on the bottom. They're going to cancel out. So I'm going to rewrite this. 2 equals 10 over cosine 40 degrees, all of that times sine 40 degrees minus 4.9 T squared. The key thing is, is this big chunk here can all be written into our calculator. There's, there's no real hard work for us to do. We just want to type 10 sine 40 degrees divided by cosine 40 degrees. So now we have 2 equals 8.39 minus 4.9t squared. I'm going to add 4.9t squared to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we have 8.39 minus 2. So to get from here to here, I added 4.9t squared to both sides. And I subtracted 2 on both sides. So from here, we can divide both sides by 4.9. So we have t squared equals 6.39 over 4.9. And take the square root. So t is equal to 1.14 seconds. Now the reason why this mattered so much I'm going to switch back to black so it's easier to read, is now we can plug it back in. The idea of a system of equations is that once we solve for one of the unknowns and get a number value, we plug it back into what we were using for the substitution. So 10 over the cosine of 40 degrees times 1.14, and be very careful to use the parentheses, 
is our entire initial speed. Remember, this V0 is not V0Y, it's not V0X, it is just the entire initial speed because we've already used it for breaking things up into components earlier. And so our final answer, we just have to plug all that into our calculator. We get 11.4 meters per second. And that is the initial speed that we have to throw if we're throwing at a 40 degree angle. Now, really important here, I want us to kind of look back at this and it really doesn't look like more math than any of our other previous examples. But the reason why this is tougher algebra is because it's the first time we've had to do substitution and then plugging back in for a system of equations before. This is the last example from chapter three. So um, the next time that we see one of these uh, example problem videos will be in chapter four, and I will see you in those next videos.